back to our channel. As many of you know, we just got a new van. We've already changed the radiator, the thermostat, and the alternator, as well as two tires. But with how bad the coolant was gelled up and rusted in the radiator, it's a good idea to do an oil change as well. So I'm going to show you how to do an oil change on a Pontiac Montana. This is a 2003. Hope this helps you out so you can do it yourself, save a little bit of money. But come along and I'll show you how to do it. For starters, just to reduce the risk of the car rolling once it's jacked up, chuck the tires. i got some chucks here. We're going to chuck the tires. Once that is done, find a good solid piece of metal underneath the car to put the jack stand under. I've already positioned it because that's a really loud process, but there's a piece of metal under here I found and I've got it already positioned. So you jack the car up. You need it just high enough for you to get underneath there. I won't fit with it down to the ground. <laughs> Precaution just so the car doesn't come off the stand and fall, use a jack stand. You got a double precaution in case your car comes off of your lift, you got another jack stand. Now when you're doing an oil change, always pop the cap off of your oil. So that all the oil will drain out. So you just pop that off. Once you're underneath the car, you need to locate your oil drain plug. You need a 15 millimeter socket for this drain plug and it is right there. That is your drain plug. I'm gonna see if I can record this well under the car. You put your socket on. And then you go counterclockwise to break it. Make sure you have an oil pan underneath. We're just going to go counterclockwise to break the seal of that bolt so that the oil can drain out. Once you've got it loose enough, you can basically twist it right off with your hands. Make sure the oil pan is right underneath so that the oil can drain into your oil pan. This can be a bit messy, as you can see. Once it starts coming out, it's gonna come out fast. Make sure your oil pan is in a good spot so it's catching that oil. Now, when you change the oil, you should definitely change the filter as well. The filter, you see back there is where we took the nut off. So the filter is located in front of there. It's this red filter right here. Sometimes you can twist it off by hand. Sometimes you need a tool. I'm going to try to do it by hand first. If that doesn't work, we'll get the tool. If you cannot get the filter off on these cars, there are plenty of tools that do work. These are two of the different options that do work to help get it off. Crank slowly because it is notorious for these filters to crunch. Then you have to go through other methods to get it off. Thank God for the help I received because mine did crunch. <laughs> I tried the screwdriver method where you drive the screwdriver from one end to the other. And that did help to loosen it some, but then it started to shred the filter. So then you need to go other options and basically slowly pry the seal because this one was seized up bad. Whoever put it on way over tightened it and it's been on for quite some time so it did seize up. Once that's off, you put the filter back in and you put your plug back in so you can refill the oil. Didn't video this part, but when you put the new filter in, 
put a little bit of oil around the rubber seal before you put it back up there. And then don't over tighten it. Just a little bit. You tighten it till it's tight, then one small turn after, and then that's tight enough. Otherwise, you deal with a seized up tight filter that doesn't want it for our screw, our bolt. Got to put that back in there. We'll tighten it back down. And then we're ready to put the oil back in. This oil change took way longer than it should have because of that seized up filter. And I really thought I completely failed. Here to find out, I guess it's common. The guy that came out, he was a godsend. Now we need to put the oil back in. This vehicle takes 5W30. Um, this is the high mileage, not the fully synthetic. But it takes a full five quarts. This vehicle takes a full five quarts of the 5W30. Notice the difference in the color of the oil going in to the oil that came out of this car. That oil was black. So it definitely needed to be changed. Wasn't planning on the ordeal that pursued to get it changed, but it's done at least. Oil changes are typically a very simple job, but when stuff like that happens, anything can turn from simple to a big headache. And this one turned into a big headache. <laughs> back on start up the engine and we're going to check our dipstick okay guys that turned into quite an ordeal the filter that was on this car had gotten seized up and it wasn't budging i used the tool that's meant to take the filters off and that tool actually punctured the filter instead of moving it as I put pressure on it it just punctured it and then it started to just crush the filter so I went the next way another way of getting stuck filters off I drove a screwdriver from one side to the other side all the way through the filter and I was putting pressure to get it loosened it did turn the filter about half a turn not enough to loosen it enough to where I could get it off but it did work until the filter started to shred. Go figure. I had someone come out that knows what he's doing. Once this happens, he was able to loosen the seal, pry loose the seal with a screwdriver and a crowbar, both, both of which he used. And he just basically knocked that seal until he actually got it loose. And he was able to start turning it slowly. Thank God for him. He helped me out immensely and I really appreciate it. But that was an ordeal. It took way longer than it should have, and I'm filthy. So much oil everywhere. It just was a mess. Hopefully this video helped show you how to do the oil change on this vehicle. Hopefully you can do your own next time. Hopefully you don't run into the same complication I ran into, because that was frustrating. 